In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and beloved Messenger Muhammad, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. The title of this video is The Miracle in the Way the Muslims Pray. Now, a quick look on how Muslims pray. Now, basically, the Muslim in prayer, the the way he prays can be divided into four main positions. The first position, as you can see on the screen, a person here maintains an upright posture, a firm posture, and he reads the first chapter of the last revelation of Allah God to be by the Quran, in addition to other verses of the Quran. This posture takes about 30 seconds and more. It depends on the person, how much from the Quran he wants to read and the supplications he wants to perform. Now the second posture, this is called ruku'ah in, in Arabic. As you can see, there is a 90 degrees here between, so the person here flexes the spine and there is 90 degrees between the upper and lower body segments. And he reads supplications here, it takes about 10 seconds and more. Now the third position here, it's called sujood. And here the person puts his forehead on the ground and he supplicates to Allah God Almighty. It takes 10 seconds and more. And the last position, a person sits on his, on his knees and he supplicates to Allah God Almighty. This takes about 30 seconds and more. Now, this is the, the positions I will concentrate upon here in the way Muslims pray to Allah God Almighty. And I will show Allah God willing the miracle in these um, actions and these positions and the benefits of this way of praying as Allah God Almighty commanded Prophet Muhammad to pray and Prophet Muhammad taught us, taught the Muslims how to pray to Allah God Almighty. And we can, I will show the miracle, the engineering miracle and the medical miracle and the benefits of this uh, form of prayer to the human body. Now, as an introduction to this uh, video, if we ponder upon verse number 7 of chapter 40 of the Quran, which states, Those who bear the throne and those around it glorify the praises of their Lord and believe in Him and ask forgiveness for those who believe. Our Lord, you encompassed everything in mercy and knowledge. So forgive those who repent and follow your way and save them from the torment of the blazing fire. Here we see a beautiful description of the angels to Allah God Almighty. They say here that he encompassed everything in mercy and knowledge. And we, it's interesting to note here that the angels they said to Allah God Almighty that he encompassed everything in mercy and knowledge. So the word mercy preceded the word knowledge. This means that the mercy of Allah God Almighty preceded his knowledge. So when Allah God Almighty wants something to be created or wants to decree a certain matter, then mercy is the specification for and the requirement for this decree. And let, let me um, explain this by giving an example. An example in Allah God Almighty, his creation for the human joints, the joints in the body, and the joint is the place where two bones meet. So when Allah Almighty wanted to create joints in the body of Adam peace upon him, the mercy requires that there is no pain when you flex your joints, when you do this action, that there is no pain. This is a mercy requirement. Now comes the knowledge of Allah Almighty to show this mercy requirement in the fact that he created additional amount of skin at the joints, these folds that you see, there's an additional amount of material at the joint, skin material. And thus when you flex your joints, there is no excessive stretching in this in these locations, in the joints, and thus there is no pain. So we see, brothers and sisters, how the knowledge of Allah God Almighty, how His mercy becomes a created object, how the mercy... So you, as a human, you are mercy materialized into a created being. So we see how the mercy of Allah God Almighty becomes a created object. Now, so having understood this, that all the commandments of Allah the Almighty and all of, of His decrees, they are all based on mercy. And thus, Allah the Almighty ordering people to pray in the way I just explained, it must 
stem. It must come come out come out of mercy. So the commandment for people to pray in the way I just described it must be based on mercy. It must have so many benefits and uh, so many benefits for humans. Now, the human body is composed of matter and energy. There is matter and there is energy which is the soul of the body, the soul. And the, and the prayer should be beneficial to both the physical body and the soul. In this video, I will concentrate on the physical body, the benefits to your body. And in uh, the, the next episode, Allah God willing, I will concentrate on the benefits of praying to the, your soul. So now to show the mercy in the way the Muslims pray and how the commandment of Allah God Almighty to Muslims to pray in uh, the manner I describe how it's mercy for a person and how it benefits the human body. Now in order to explain this, I need to explain something I call functional adaptation of the human body. I need to show and explain this concept and then we can see the benefit of prayer on the human body. Now, functional adaptation can be explained from the Quran in chapter 23, verse 14, which states, Then Allah God created the nutfa into an alaqa, then Allah created the alaqa into a mudga, then Allah created the mudga into bones, then Allah clothed the bones with flesh, and then Allah brought it forth by another method of creation. So blessed be Allah God, the best of creators. Now, in this Quranic verse, Allah God Almighty describes the stages involved in the growth and uh, bringing forth of a person. Now, the, in the verse, this, these stages can be divided into two main parts. The first part, Allah describes the stages involved in the growth of human inside, inside the womb of the mother, where Allah states the method of creation. Now, then Allah states that after birth, we can learn from the verse, that after birth, Allah brings the person for, uh, forth, meaning that the person grows by another method of creation. What does this mean? Before creation, the way that you uh, increase in mass, uh, the way your muscles increase in mass and your bones, you have no control over this. It's co completely independent of your uh, effect, how you grow in the womb of the mother. Now, after birth, Allah states that you grow by another method, meaning that when, after, you, after you are born, you see uh, stimulation and stimuli from the environment. Let me demonstrate this by giving examples. Suppose that you start today, if you, that you measure the diameter of your muscle, let's say your biceps muscle, and you start doing exercises for a month, then you measure the diameter again, you see that there is an increase in muscle mass. So what this means is that because you put loads, increased loads on your muscles, uh, increase loads on your muscles, this stimulates them, it produces a stimulatory signal in the muscles, which stimulates uh, cells to produce more muscle mass. And the mercy in this is that because the first time, the first day, you start exercising, you feel pain in your muscles. Now, Allah Almighty wants to remove this pain, so He put a mechanism in the muscles, is that when you exercise, you produce stimulation in the muscles that stimulates the cells to produce uh, increased muscle mass, if you have a stronger muscle, and thus the pain is removed. Now, the same thing that happens to muscle happen to bones. If you take, for example, an image of your bone at the beginning of exercise, let's take, for example, by a CT scan or an X-ray or an MRI, and you take a, a picture of the same location after, let's say, a month, you see that there is an increase in bone mass. You have bony growth. And this and why? Because when you start exercising, you feel pain in your bones because there is high stress. Now, when Allah God Almighty put the mechanism that you increase uh, bone mass with time, this means that the area is increased and thus the stress, which is the force of the area, you have a larger area and thus low, lower stress. So we see that this, this is what they call functional adaptation, that you adapt according to stimulation that you see. So, this is the functional adaptation. Now, we can understand, also Allah Almighty explains to us this functional adaptation also in the Qur'an. We can see, brothers and sisters, the beauty on, of pondering upon the Qur'an. So that if we think about verse number 39 of chapter 41 of the Qur'an, which states, And among his signs that you see the earth barren, but when Allah God sends down water to it, it vibrates and grows. Verily, he who gives it life, 
Surely he's able to give life to the dead. Indeed, he's able to do all things. So if you think about this verse, Allah describes how things grow. And he states that it vibrates and it grows. So Allah states that you need to have vibratory signal, vibrations, in order to growth, to grow. In order to have growth, you need vibratory signal. And the amplitude of the vibration gives you the size of the uh, creature. If you have a, for example, if you exercise with 10 kilos compared to 5 kilos, you'll have a larger mass because a larger amplitude of vibration. And if there is an increase in the frequency of the vibration, you have a stronger, uh, faster response, faster growth. So we see how from the Quran we can understand functional adaptation. Now, having understood all of this, if you look at, as you can see on the screen, if you look at the signal produced from muscles, you can see that the Allah the Mahi designed muscles to produce a vibratory signal. It's a vibra vibration. So we have amplitude and frequency. And this is needed for growth and regeneration of the tissue. Now, having understood all of this, coming to the prayer, the effect of prayer on the body. Take, for example, the second position or uh, in prayer, which is, as you can see on the screen, when a person in this position is called ruku'a, you have a 90 degrees uh, angle about between the upper and lower segments of the body. You can see that the center of gravity of the whole body, which is located at the distal end of the spine, is shifted. When a person in that position, the center of gravity of the body is shifted forward. And this shift, what it triggers, it triggers the increased stimulation of back muscles. Because when you have a shift in the center of gravity to forward, the muscles respond, they produce tension, they produce vibration to, produ to in the opposite direction. So this position in prayer, and you hold the position for maybe 10, 20 seconds and more, what this um, produces, this produces an increased output from the muscle, both in amplitude and frequency. And the effect on the body, that this increased stimulation of the muscle, it stimulates the regeneration of bone and muscles, meaning the removal of old bone material and putting in new bone material, because there is an all uh, continuous process Allah God Almighty placed in the body to remove old material, put new material for you to be in perfect form all the time and no pain. So in prayer, this uh, stimulation from the muscle stimulates uh, cells to produce new bone material, new muscle material, and to remove the old one, and it in uh, increases bone marrow to production of blood increases the stimulates the glands to produce hormones so it stimulates the body and the beauty of this as well it stimulates the body with no pain because it's light exercise you do it five times a day the muslims pray five times a day so there's a continuous um, stimulation of the body and the cells in the body in a light manner because if you stimulate for example if somebody does um, heavy exercises can cause micro fractures and micro tearing in the tissue in the body but this light exercise light stimulation five times a day the Muslim prays so it it triggers the regeneration of the body and keeping you in perfect shape no pain and keep giving you um, better health and in all aspects now let's examine, for example, another uh, posture in the, another position in prayer, the one you can see on the screen. Again, there is a shift in the center of gravity to the front, and this stimulates leg muscles to contract as well as neck muscles. So we see that the prayer stimulates all muscles in the body, even the toes, the toe muscle, the muscles attached to the toes and the uh, fingers as well. So it's. So we can conclude here that prayer, the way the Muslims pray, Allah the Almighty, when He commanded Prophet Muhammad to do this, and Prophet Muhammad ordered us to do this as well, it's for our benefit in all aspects, physically and mentally. Physically, it triggers the body to regenerate, it, it enhances the regeneration, the regenerative uh, mechanism of the body, and keeps your, uh, keep, keeps your um, bones uh, strong, uh, with uh, adequate uh, bone mass and uh, also uh, your muscles. So five times a day, there is a continuous stimulation of the body. And we see why Allah the Mahi divided the prayers into five different times for continuous stimulation because the Muslim prays at dawn, then at midday, and then at uh, afternoon, and then at sunset, and then in the, in the night prayer. So it has, you have continuous 
stimulation, light stimulation of the body, which keeps the body fit, regenerative, uh, it regenerates the tissue in the body, it stimulates the production of uh, red blood cells, hormones, it activates the body more and more. And the medical benefits of this is that, for example, osteoporosis, there is a disease called osteoporosis where the bone gets thinner and weaker. Now, if statistically, the people who pray, the way the Muslims do, the Muslims the, who practice prayer, um, the from stats, statistics, there is a, a reduced osteoporosis in communities where, 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 where Muslims are found compared to community, communities where they don't pray. For example, in Western countries like England or um, Germany, osteoporosis is a major problem. It's a major problem. But in uh, Muslim countries where they practice prayer, it is a very kind of, um, it's, a, it's a minor problem. And only the a small number of people, they get it, osteoporosis. This also applies to rheumatoid arthritis. Arthritis is the weakening of uh, bone at the joints and um, also cartilage material, stiffening of the, of the joints. Also, the prayer, Allah Almighty, when He command us to pray, it stimulates the prayer, the, the way the Muslims pray, it stimulates the production of collagen, uh, of collagen material, of uh, cartilage material, and stimulates the production of the synovial fluid at the joints, so it keeps your uh, joints lubricated, strong, and uh, f can flex easily. So again, statistically, the people who pray, they have less osteoporosis and rheumatoid arthritis than the communities that don't pray. The same applies to uh, anemia, which is the um, weakening of the blood and production of red blood cells. The people who pray, they have stronger blood than the people who do not pray. That's from statistically, stats. And so you can see that the prayer, Allah Almighty commanded it as a mercy for people. It enhances the, the health of the human body as a whole. Bone, muscles, uh, blood, everything. So we see, brothers and sisters, how all the command, the, the, what Allah Almighty orders to do, the commandments of Allah Almighty are all based on mercy. And to know more details about this topic, please visit my website at www.quran-miracle.com and you can email me at zquran.com and may the peace and the of Allah be upon you all.